Here's more bi of the biology of our specific example, healing a cut under your skin, under a scab. The signaling factor, PDGF, the cell surface receptor, the PDGF receptor, two proteins with specific three-dimensional tertiary structures, and uh, I should draw the kinase uh, enzyme uh, domain. Uh, we've got an extracellular domain on the receptor that is going to have a binding site for the PDGF protein. And then we have a cytoplasmic or intracellular domain of this receptor protein that is going to uh, be involved in signal transduction. And in this case, it's protein phosphorylation, and it's going to stimulate the target cell skin epidermal cells to go through the cell cycle faster to go through mitosis and divide and heal the wound. Uh, here's some biology. Here's a cross section of your skin. The epidermis is this outer layer that is constantly being sloughed off and replenished as you uh, grow, go. And uh, now, where do the where does PDGF come from? And the answer is PDGF comes from platelets. All right. So if we zoom in on a platelet, there's a platelet. It's surrounded by a phospholipid bilayer. So it's surrounded by our familiar phospholipid bilayer. And um, inside the phos uh, inside the platelet are many things, including uh, clotting factors. Okay, so platelets are famous for helping clot a wound, so cause the blood uh, supply uh, to stop, clot, and form a scab. So some clotting factors inside the platelet. Here's something else that's inside the platelet. There are vesicles inside the platelet and the vesicles are full of floating inside of them are full of PDGF. Where do they come from? And the answer is they come from the bone marrow and in the bone marrow there is a kind of cell that's in the bone marrow, doesn't come out of the bone marrow. There's a, a cell, let's see, do I have a name of that? Yes. Inside the bone marrow there's a cell called a megakaryocyte and megakaryocytes uh, have a uh, process where they will pinch off, they'll butt off pieces of the cell, and those become platelets and head out from the bone marrow into the blood. That's where platelets come from. They're made by megakaryocytes, and the megakaryocyte is pinching a portion of it off, of the cell off. Now, here's the nucleus, and there's mitochondria, and chlor uh, not chloroplasts, there's mitochondria, there are all kinds of organelles in here, and they don't leave. These are not platelets, they're not really cells, they're pieces of a cell, part of a cell, like that. And um, it's a package, it's like a suitcase, and they are floating around in our blood, and when there is a wound, the platelets release their factors at the site of the wound. So platelets will uh, be signaled at the site of the wound to release clotting factors, cause the blood to clot and the scab to form. Then, in that same area, they'll release PDGF. And so PDGF comes from platelets that release it at the site of the wound. And PDGF is going to stimulate the skin cells to grow and divide. And so this is our first example that this information switch is highly regulated. The source is PDGF. PDGF is not made anywhere near the skin. It's made way over here in the bone marrow. And it's made in a very safe suitcase. Why? because we don't want uncontrolled cell division that would be cancerous. So the platelets uh, contain this dangerous growth factor, growth stimulant, PDGF, and it is kept inside the platelet until it's released at the site of a wound, like that. Okay, so that's the process going on. Now, we could zoom in on the PDGF in the bone marrow in the megakerocyte, and we know something about this already, you know. Uh, PDGF, it's a protein. It's made in the megakaryocyte, and uh, so there it would be DNA in the nucleus. There would be a gene for PDGF. It would be copied into RNA. We've learned about that with other proteins. The RNA would come out. A ribosome would bind it. And in this case, in this case, it's interesting to see that uh, the PDGF is going to have a signaling factor that is going to... No, um, it's going to have a signaling factor that's going to deliver it to the rough ER 
signaling uh, factor uh, that's going to cause it to be delivered to the rough ER, and the PDGF is going to be synthesized and be present in the lumen of the rough ER, and then it's going to be in vesicles. But in these, these vesicles do not release the PDGF. The PDGF stays inside vesicles inside in the platelet uh, producing megakaryocyte, and then pin and then the pieces of the cell are pinched off so that we have budding off of the megakaryocyte portion of the cell, and in it are vesicles of PDGF. So it's a little different story about protein synthesis happening inside the megakaryocyte. All right. So uh, the next thing is uh, to mention again this pathway where PDGF is released from platelets at the site of a wound, and that PDGF just floats around in the immediate area, but it doesn't go far, and it doesn't go far because the PDGF gets degraded quickly. So it's stable inside the platelet, but as soon as it's released, it doesn't float away very far, it stays localized because it gets broken down. It gets localized, stays localized at the site of the wound, and only in that neighborhood does it bind to a PDGF receptor. There are other kinds of receptors on skin cells, but PDGF has a specific shape that binds well only the PDGF receptor, activates the kinase, and sends the signal into the cell. And the signal into the cell is going to actually function, and jumping ahead into chapter 12 a little bit, going to function here to stimulate the cell cycle. This we'll find is a common place for cells in our body to be stopped and paused and waiting for a s information signal to tell them to go through the cell cycle. This point is called the G1 to S transition and it has a simpler name. It's also called the start of the cell cycle. And so our skin cells are paused at the start of the cell cycle, and uh, PDGF can stimulate them by activating the PDGF receptor. All right, and so we talked a little bit about this in the overview, uh, that normally skin cells have a low mitotic index, so if we measure the cell cycle in skin cells, uh, only a small number of them are in mitosis at any given point, uh, but some of them are because the cells are going through the cell cycle, and at a given point in time, some of them are in the mitotic um, step of the cell cycle. When PDGF stimulates the cells in this neighborhood, the mitotic index goes up, and the mitotic index goes up because the cells are moving through this stop sign and they're moving through this start point more efficiently. So that's the switch, is that we're going through start quicker and more cells are going through mitosis. Here's an example of some skin cancers that would have higher mitotic index or that may have a higher mitotic index. Uh, if you have an unusual mole, the doctor would take a biopsy, they take a little of the tissues out, they'd put on a microscope slide they put the uh, slide under um, a under a microscope, uh, like we've done in uh, the Bio 106 lab, and they would uh, look at the skin cells from the biopsy, and they would count the percentage of cells in mitosis. And the percentage of cells in mitosis is called the mitotic index. And that's part of the diagnosis and prognosis of all these moles. There are a variety of tests in the clinic that are done on the tissue of a lump or a mole. And if the uh, tissue has a relatively low mitotic index, that's when the doctor might talk to you and say, you know, I'm not too worried about this mole uh, because it's growing slowly. It might be benign. It might not be a problem. Uh, on the other hand, in measuring the mitotic index under a microscope in the lab, they might find a higher mitotic index, really high mitotic index, and come back to you and say, you know, I'm pretty concerned about this mole because it's growing quickly. And uh, moles that are growing quickly, tissues that are growing quickly, they become malignant growths, cancerous growths, like that. So here we're going to talk just briefly about this patient who has skin cancer. And, you know, skin cancer is one type of cancer. 
So you can have uh, brain cancer, uh, or you can have skin cancer. And in that same way, there are a variety of different types of skin cancer, and this woman has a specific type of skin cancer that's called dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance, and her skin cancer is rare. And, uh, but it's a certain type of skin cancer, and it's a certain type of skin cancer that scientists and doctors have been able to um, diagnose for years. So they've been able to say, you have this specific type of skin cancer for years, and um, here's why. Let's just find a picture of why. Ooh, maybe we won't. We'll go uh, and, and talk in our next um, lecture about why she has that specific type of skin cancer.